That's okay. <laughs> um, um, we started the investigation um, on Saturday. Um, worked uh, through the day Saturday and into Saturday evening, um, all day Sunday, and uh, culminating in the arrest of uh, Mr. Gomery at four o'clock on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, excuse me, uh, this morning uh, in Little Rock County. This is uh, not something that occurs um, in uh, this county very often. I don't know that it's ever occurred before. It is rather bizarre, but um, it, uh, it did occur. Our officers investigated it. Uh, we uh, involved the prosecutor's office in um, uh, getting some direction and uh, um, got a warrant yesterday afternoon for Mr. Gomery. Uh, we went to his house. He wasn't there. Uh, it took us a while to uh, uh, track him down, uh, which we did, and uh, made the arrest uh, in Little Law County this morning. Okay, now I have my question for you. Okay. Uh, did uh, Mr. Fisher, did he come to uh, law enforcement and provide you with the information? Is that how the investigation began? Yes, and we want to thank Mr. Fisher for doing the right thing. Had he not come forward, um, Mr. Gomery very well may have found somebody else to uh, carry out his plan and we'd be investigating a murder, uh, not this is. Do you have any of uh, an idea of the motive behind or the story that goes along behind his decision? Well, they were, uh, um, Mr. Cook uh, represented uh, a uh, plaintiff in a lawsuit against Mr. Gomery, and um, we would guess that may be the basis for that. What sort of details um, are you able to provide us as to the arrangements that uh, Mr. Gomery had with Mr. Fisher to uh, execute this uh, attempted murder? Uh, I won't comment on that right now. Yeah, we're still investigating this. Uh, we still have detectives. Uh, um, who are going to be interviewing uh, more people in regards to this. So as far as our investigation is concerned, I don't want to get too far into that. Was there a timetable, Sheriff, as to when this was supposed to happen? What was it? Was? When the alleged murder was supposed to take place? Uh, that's, uh, you mean, did had they planned it for had he planned it, they planned it, whatever, for a certain date and time? Yes. Um, I don't know that it was uh, uh, um, um, planned um, to that extent. Um, they had talked about it, yeah. Is there any sort of timetable you can provide us with, like when uh, Mr. Gomery first approached Mr. Fisher and any sort of subsequent meetings the two had? Not sure what that timetable, very recently, very recently. When did Mr. Fisher come to law enforcement? Okay. What was his relationship with Mr. Gomery? I don't know. Do you know how Mr. Gomery chose Mr. Fisher to do this? No. Um, during court it said that he fight arrest at all from you guys when you arrested him this morning? Not that I'm aware of. I wasn't there, so I, I can't tell you the details. Okay. Is he arrested at home? No. Traffic's down. In Little Rock County. Was it a random stop, or are you guys looking for him? Well, we were looking for him. Was he arrested by the Little Rock deputies? Or Our officers. And we don't know officers. The information in court specifically was that we had contacted him and informed him that there was an arrest warrant and that we had made arrangements for Mr. Gomery to turn himself in, meet with the detective last evening, and uh, Mr. Gomery changed his position on that through the evening, and uh, we then began trying to locate Mr. Gomery and did locate him at a residence in North Mila County. And, uh, the Sheriff's Office of Wheeling County tried to get a hold of him via PA system outside of that residence, and Mr. Gomery refused to come to the door. So officers set up outside that residence and waited for him to leave the room. 
instance, at which time he was arrested. Is the connection to residence where he was at in the there is a connection. Uh, I'm not sure that we should relay that at this time. Can you tell us the address? No. I, I don't know the address right offhand. I'm not sure that we could relay, relay it. So just for clarification, you had been in touch with Mr. Gomery. He had agreed to turn himself in? That is correct. But then did not. Okay. That is correct. He was... He was fairly adamant that he wanted to turn himself in this morning. And uh, that was not part of the original deal. Any reason for the delay? He provided reasons um, that, to me, they didn't make sense. But um, he had a rationale that he, you know, he didn't want to spend the night in jail. Now you said it's a very bizarre situation for this county especially. I mean, is it even more so being that he used to be a prosecutor here and in Leelanau and has a firm grasp, grasp on the law, I guess? Um, well, that adds to the confusion. Uh, why did he do this? Um, I don't know the motive. How are you feeling about this case? As far as? I mean, are you shocked about this? Is this all? Oh, sure. Uh, you know, you have a couple of very prominent people in the area. Um, and uh, we don't expect those kind of things. But when they come up, you know, we end up dealing with those. Some news reports have stated that Mr. Gomery uh, paid uh, Mr. Fisher $1,000 down, that it was a $20,000 agreement. I wonder if you can comment on that, and also if there were recorded conversations with Mr. Gomery. No and yes. In that order? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Won't comment on the money. Um, there are uh, recordings. Thank you. Was Mr. Cook ever thought to be in danger? Was he ever thought to be in danger over the weekend? Or? Uh, we weren't taking any chances, um, you know, with the information we had. Um, but um, with uh, Mr. Fisher cooperating with us, um, we were, um, you know, taking uh, precautions, um, not knowing whether or not there may have been somebody else involved that we weren't aware of. At what point was Mr. Cook notified? About what? At what when was he notified that there was the possibility that uh, Mr. Gomery was attempting to have him killed? That was, uh, he was notified on Saturday. Have there been any prior threats or anything? <clears throat> no. No. Was, did Mr. Fisher come to you guys on his own accord? Did you have a undercover thing set with him? Kind of, how did that work? He approached us. So you have no prior relationship with you guys? It's kind of. But you guys don't know the nature of his relationship to Gomery? We, we know that they had interactions that were probably uh, business related um, through uh, a company that they, I guess, shared interest in, but it was no direct relationship. It was not a an friendship relationship or a business relationship. It was more along the line that I believe Mr. Fisher was being used for service purposes for Mr. Gomery. What sort of business is he in? Um, I'm not sure that's relevant, um, but it was a, he was being used for a business service. And going back to Pat, your question, you know, we did we had conversations with Mr. Cook and Mr. Fisher throughout this investigation, and they were both concerned enough for their safety, as were we, that they had discussed, and I believe in one, at least one of those events or one of those circumstances relocated their family uh, for the time being to avoid any possible problems. Say both men did that? <coughs> uh, both men were concerned about it. Both men thought about it, and I, I'm at least certain that certain that one did. Which one? Uh, Mr. Cook. 
Is there any obvious reason, Nate, why he would have talked to Fisher about doing something like this? Uh, just like the sheriff said, you know, the motive aspect of this is unknown. We haven't talked to Mr. Gomery yet about this. Uh, we hope to. Uh, if given the opportunity, we would like to get that information from him as well. What sort of investigation did you start to do on Mr. Gomery uh, once this became apparent to you? Like, does he have any previous arrests? Has there been anything? Okay. Mr. Gomery has been a community member for many years with no criminal history. As you stated and you well known, he's a prosecuting, former prosecuting attorney and a, and a court official. This is completely incomprehensible. What about Mr. Fisher? Did he have any kind of a criminal history as to why maybe Mr. Gomery chose him to do this? It is possible. Again, Mr. Gomery's motives are unknown. We have not talked to him. Uh, we know of Mr. Fisher. He does have prior uh, criminal convictions, but uh, that whether the, whether or not that was a part of the decision for Mr. Garmin to contact him is unknown to us. All we can say is Mr. Fisher had the moral fortitude to come forward in this event and, uh, and tell us this was going to happen. Do you have any reason to believe that he may not have done the right thing? I guess I'm just confused on why maybe he was making the agreement and then decided to go to you guys. Well, I don't know that he ever, we did not just be aware, we never stated that he made the agreement. Right, but he didn't he receive a, he was going to receive a thousand dollar down payment? This is part of the investigation that we're not going to get into the logistics of how that deal went, all right? You know, we're, we did not say that Mr. Fisher agreed to carrying out the homicide. Right. Uh, this might fall under that ledger, but uh, had there been discussion on how it was going to be done? I yeah. guess. Yes. It was a very. It was detailed. And we can you be able to tell us kind of. Not not at this point, but I think because we still are trying to get the information together specifically how it was going to be occurring. Um, but uh, there was a plan. You said this is not typical, obviously, for our part of the country, but uh, usually it seems like that often these types of investigations take a lot longer for the arrest. Do you feel this was a, this was quicker than maybe what a lot of your colleagues elsewhere? I think a lot of the other ones. Uh, there was a recent one in Michigan mm -hmm. where somebody that was if they were in prison and they were looking for somebody to uh, murder somebody else and it kind of that information got out and they used an undercover uh, police officer as the, uh, the hitman in mm -hmm. that instance um, and I think that would take a little bit longer to develop uh, but this was very quick very fast very quick and from Saturday all through till 4 a.m. this morning. It was very busy. I mean, it kind of works for police officers too, but I mean, do you guys ever feel the danger of, I mean, when you are arresting people or a attorney is suing someone or something, you're kind of making enemies with potentially bad people. I mean, is this always something that is a possibility that someone could want to get revenge or get back at you guys or a lawyer or a prosecutor or something? I mean, you mean, uh, you mean in, the, in the law enforcement business because we arrest people, you think that there, <clears throat> um, um, there'll be some retribution against us or that particular police yeah, officer? Yeah, do you ever, do you ever for, feel that? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure that at times you know, some of our officers you know, feel that, but and at times, you know, people do make statements and, uh, about that, but uh, nothing has happened, and usually the results, thankfully, statements. And him being a prosecutor, I, I don't know that, or former prosecutor, I don't know that. Well, I meant like Mr. Cook, he, I mean, did, does he feel, or you don't know how he feels, by saying also,